Lesson 41, One-Way Analysis of Variance. A one-way analysis of variance is an inferential statistics method used to determine whether the means for more than two populations are all equal. This involves conducting a hypothesis testing procedure to decide if the condition of mu1 equals mu2 equals mu m is valid or not. In a one-way analysis of variance, only one factor, which is determined by the categories of a single qualitative variable, distinguishes the various populations in the analysis for which the means, calculated from the values of a single quantitative variable, are compared. For instance, a one-way analysis of variance could be conducted to determine if the mean starting salary of registered nurses is the same in Washington, Oregon, and California, since a single qualitative variable, the state, distinguishes the three populations for which the means of a single quantitative variable, that is the starting salary of registered nurses, are being compared. With a one-way analysis of variance, the total variance of the sample is partitioned into components that measure the variance between the samples and the variance within the samples. This is accomplished by segmenting the total deviation with the means of the samples selected from the various populations in the one-way analysis of variance. Recall that the variance for the sample values of a single quantitative variable is the square of the standard deviation of those data values and is given by S sub X squared. Introducing a single qualitative variable to identify specific values of the quantitative variable as belonging to a particular population produces the following result. Here, the variance is the same. It's just written in a form that allows us to separate the data values by the population from which they were sampled. Now, after partitioning the variance into the desired components, the following result can be derived. Now, this result introduces in the deviation in the numerator a subtract x bar j and an add x bar j, which is essentially zero. In the denominator, the subtract m and add m are introduced, which is again zero. So introducing these components doesn't change the variance at all. It just rewrites it in a form that allows us to look at the total variance segmented into various components. Using some mathematics and statistical results, we can rewrite this in this form. And this form shows how the total variance can be separated into two components, a component that measures the variation within the samples and a component that measures the variation between the samples. The variance within the samples measures the variation within the data of different samples. And the variance between the samples measures the variation among the means of samples taken from the different populations. These components are the variances that are compared in the one-way analysis of variance hypothesis testing procedure. Now here's the guide we can follow when conducting our one-way analysis of variance. A one-way analysis of variance begins by conducting a hypothesis testing procedure. The first step in the hypothesis testing procedure is to state the hypotheses. The stated hypotheses HO and H1 are always expressed in the same manner in a one-way analysis of variance. HO is that all of the population means are equal, and H1 is that not all the population means are equal. Now, unless there exists a compelling reason to do so otherwise, Hypothesis testing procedures are conducted using the customary 5% level of significance, or alpha equals 0.05. Now, after the sample data collected from each population has been entered into separate lists, the ANOVA command on the TID4 calculator will calculate the desired p-value for the hypothesis test procedure. In statistics, the term ANOVA is the commonly used abbreviation of the phrase analysis of variance. For instance, if our one-way analysis of variance involved testing the equality of four population means, 
we would need to enter the four samples collected from the four populations into four separate lists on the T84 calculator. We enter data into the T84 calculator by pressing STAT and then enter. And then list one, we would enter the first sample. And in list two, we'd enter the second sample. And list three, we'd enter the third sample. And list four, we'd enter the fourth sample. And then the ANOVA command is found by pressing STAT, arrowing over to tests, and then arrow up so the cursor is next to ANOVA. Press enter to select. And then we enter the four lists. Second one brings up list one, comma. Second two brings up list two, comma. Second three brings up list three, comma. Second four brings up list four. Close parenthesis and pressing enter will conduct the ANOVA calculation. It's the p-value that we use to reach the decision in our hypothesis test procedure. And comparing that p-value to alpha, the level of significance, leads us to our conclusion. Now, the formula that's programmed into the TI-84 calculator's ANOVA command is given here. This test statistic for this hypothesis test procedure follows the F distribution with numerator degrees of freedom of m minus 1 and denominator degrees of freedom of n minus m. Here, the numerator is the estimate of the variance between the samples, and the denominator is the estimate of the variance within the samples. Now, if HO is valid and all of the means are equal, then the x bar j's would all be equal to the overall mean x bar thus making the x bar j's minus x bar equal to zero. Thus, small values of f are consistent with the idea of HO that all the population means are equal. In order for a one-way analysis of variance to be applied, each of the independent random samples must be selected from populations that reasonably follow a normal distribution with approximately equal variances. Now, in order to obtain independent random samples, the appropriate methods of sampling need to be applied. But as far as the populations following a normal distribution with equal variances, uh, certain statistical analysis techniques need to be applied to verify these conditions. Unfortunately, in this lesson, we will not be learning how to conduct these particular statistical analyses. Therefore, whenever we conduct a one-way analysis of variance, will do so under the assumption that the populations reasonably follow a normal distribution with approximately equal variances. When the sample size is selected from each of the populations are equal, which is referred to as a balanced design, or even approximately equal, undetected violations of the condition of equal population variances will not seriously compromise the validity of the results in a one-way analysis of variance. Therefore, even though it's not necessary to do so, it's good practice to conduct a balanced design whenever possible while conducting a one-way analysis of variance. The calculated p-value is used to reach a decision regarding the validity of HO. Small p-values provide sample evidence contradicting HO. That's why whenever the calculated p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject HO. Large p-values provide sample evidence consistent with HO. That's why whenever the p-value is greater than alpha, we do not reject HO. Now that we've made our decision, we need to state the conclusion interpreting this decision. When HO is not rejected, the conclusion is that all of the population means are equal. That is, the means do not differ significantly from each other. When HO is rejected, the conclusion is that not all of the population means are equal. That is, at least one of the population means differs significantly from the others. When the decision is to not reject HO, and the conclusion reached is that all of the population means are equal, that is, mu1 equals mu2 equals mu m, the one-way analysis of variance is complete. When the decision is to reject HO, 
and the conclusion reaches that not all of the population means are equal, the one-way analysis of variance is continued. The one-way analysis of variance hypothesis testing procedure can only detect if at least one of the population means differs significantly from the others. It does not indicate which of the particular means are not equal, or specifically how they differ. In order to determine which particular population means are not equal, and specifically how they differ, all pairwise comparison confidence intervals could be constructed to estimate the actual differences in the population means with a 1 minus alpha times 100% simultaneous level of confidence. So this is accomplished by conducting a confidence interval estimate involving the pairs of two population means. Thus, we use the following to guide us through the process of constructing each of these confidence intervals. The 2SAMP tint command on the TI-84 calculator can be used to construct all C equals M times M minus 1 divided by 2 pairwise comparison confidence intervals for the M population means. For instance, if there were M equals 4 population means involved in the one-way analysis of variance, there would be a total of C equals 4 times 4 minus 1 divided by 2, or 6 pairwise comparison confidence intervals to construct. These 6 pairwise comparison confidence intervals would compare the mu1 to mu2, and mu1 to mu3, and mu1 to mu4, as well as comparing mu2 to mu3, mu2 to mu4, and finally mu3 to mu4. These are all the six pairwise comparison confidence intervals that need to be constructed in order to determine which of the population means differ from each other. If each of these six pairwise comparison confidence intervals were constructed using a 95% level of confidence, the probability that all six confidence intervals simultaneously accurately estimate the actual difference between the paired population means is 0.95 raised to the sixth power, or 0.735. That's because each of the individual confidence intervals have 95% confidence, meaning that they accurately estimate the actual value with probability 0.95. In order for all six confidence intervals to accurately estimate the actual difference between them, the first confidence interval has to be accurate, and the second one has to be accurate, and the third one, and the fourth one, and the fifth one, and the sixth confidence interval all have to be accurate. Now, assuming that each of the confidence interval estimates are independent of one another, then the probability that all six accurately estimate the difference in the paired population means would be the 0.95 times the 0.95 times 0.95 and so on six times, thus giving us the 0.95 to the sixth power. This overall simultaneous confidence level of 0.735 is not large enough for our statistical results. Therefore, in order for the C equals M times M minus one over two pairwise comparison confidence intervals to achieve a one minus alpha times 100% level of confidence simultaneously each individual confidence interval estimate must be constructed with a seeth root of 1 minus alpha level of confidence. This will ensure that the overall simultaneous confidence level will be 1 minus alpha when we use each individual confidence level of the seeth root of 1 minus alpha. So this could be done by pressing stat arrow over to tests, and then arrow down to the 2SAMP tint command. And when the cursor is next to 2SAMP tint, we press enter. Here we have data. In order to compare the first population mean and the second population mean, we use the data in list one and list two. Now, to have an overall 95% confidence level for all six confidence intervals, 
we need to individually do the confidence rolls with the sixth root of 0.95. To do this, we press six and then math and arrow down to the X root command, enter, and then 0.95. This will calculate the sixth root of 0.95. Press enter. We see that each individual confidence interval will be done at the 0.99148 level of confidence. Pooled is always no. Down arrow to calculate, we press enter, and then we could get the estimate for the mu1 minus mu2. To get the estimate for the first population mean and the third population mean, we just conduct the two samp t int command again, but this time using the data in list one and list three, and everything else is the same. Arrow down to calculate. To get the third pairwise comparison confidence intervals, we just press stat, arrow over to test, select two samp t int, but this time to compare the first population mean to the fourth population mean, we use the data in list one and list four. Keeping everything the same, arrow down to calculate, press enter to get our in interval estimate for the difference between those means. To do the interval estimate between the second and the third population means, we select our two samp t interval command and use the data in list two and list three. And then keeping everything the same, we arrow down, press enter to calculate, and it provides us with our estimate. Again, we repeat the process by pressing stat, arrow over to test, select two samp t int. Now to estimate the difference between mu2 and mu4, we use the data in list2 and list4. And keeping everything the same, arrow down to calculate, press enter. And then finally, we press stat, arrow over to test, select two samp t int. To get the estimate between the difference of mu3 and mu4, we use the data in list3 and list4. Arrow down to calculate, and we get our results. Now that we have all of our six pairwise comparison confidence intervals, we can interpret the results. After all of the pairwise comparison confidence intervals are constructed, the results can be interpreted in order to determine which particular population means are not equal, that is, where the confidence interval does not contain zero, and specifically how they differ that is, as estimated by the corresponding confidence interval. So now that we've covered our one-way analysis of variance, we could put this lesson in practice by trying some examples.